see they're alive. Captain, urgent news from the general. Why not really blow it up, Captain? Captain Blah. Bugging into Arsenal and Bay. I'm giving her all she's but Captain. Captain. Oh, Captain. My Captain. Hey guys, Captain Crockby here. We recently finished the Winner of Champions, and I went the furthest I ever have. We have the Summer of Legends and the Winner of Champions, and they're both incredible, incredible tournaments that we play uh, with, with the Discord and the competitive scene of, of Unmatched. And the Winner of Champions, the way it's, it works is we have a, a bracket, you have a division. It's Arsenal format, and uh, each bracket has six to eight players in it, so there's over 100 players, and they, every single player will play the other person uh, in their bracket twice. And then the top two teams from that bracket will advance to the top 32. Um, and this is my match for top 32, so I made it out. And just a huge thanks, huge shout out to Darkblade. Uh, he's hosted a lot of, he hosted so many, so many games, um, but he hosted two of mine, uh, my top 32, and uh, maybe another one. I don't want to spoil anything. But yeah, huge thanks to Darkblade, and then uh, just Incredible uh, opponent in Patrick. We had a lot of fun. Just had an incredible time uh, in this tournament. I can't wait to do the next one. So yeah, I hope you enjoy the matches and uh, I'll see you soon. Welcome everyone. As people start to filter in, uh, we are going live with the second of three hosts today. Um, at least that I'm hosting. I believe Freak is hosting an additional one. So lots of unmatched today to, to watch and keep up with as we start to round out our top 32 um, and get the final people making it to the round of 16 uh, that starts this coming Friday. Um, on this matchup, we've got Captain Crockpot versus Patrick. Um, and this should be a, a pretty interesting one based on the matchups we've got. Um, with me on commentary today, I have uh, Point Dexter G. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm glad you're able to because uh, I didn't have anyone lined up for this, and you know I don't mind doing this solo commentary, but it's a lot more fun when you have someone to uh, to talk with and bounce stuff off of. So glad you yeah, can make it. Yeah, I've done a solo commentary and it's pretty hard. Oh, looks like these guys are already getting at this. Yep, looks like we are ready to go. So this will be a little test. Um, the timer that we're using here is one that I am uh, controlling. So there's a couple signals that the players will give me when they are uh, doing certain things. Uh, whenever combat cards go below the board, I will be pausing it. And then whenever um, they flip their hero cards, uh, I'll pass to the other player. So this is something you'll recognize if you saw the uh, finals semi-finals and grand finals from uh, last tourney uh, where Zero did a similar thing um, when we did not have the UML timer fully realized. Um, but yeah, so uh, I might be slightly distracted with that. Uh, Jeremy's going to try to keep me, like, notice, of, also keep an eye and see if I make any mistakes, but shouldn't be too bad, so. Um, yeah, uh, this, this matchup um, is an interesting one. Uh, do you have any initial thoughts on it, Jeremy? I don't have a whole lot of excuse with it because I haven't played this matchup. I mean, don't do this Dracula a lot myself. Most people that know me know that I like to really aggress in fighters, which is generally not what Dracula is. He's very much a kind of way back and wait for the right moment to come in there. Mm -hmm. um, both of these fighters, Dracula and Moon Knight, are both perfectly capable of going in there and dumping a lot of hurt on the other very quickly. Um, how that goes here for these guys. Yeah. Yeah, the, uh... This is definitely one... I don't know on the offset who's favored, obviously, um, with Moon Knight having advantage and getting map pick. It's going to be, um... Good for him, especially as he was able to take things to a map where if Drax not careful with positioning can really uh, get into problems with uh, taking attacks from high ground which are going to make those extremely powerful Conchu attacks even worse for Drac. Um, however at the same time Drac does have a couple tools that could maybe um, take advantage of the map as well. Uh, for instance Ravening Seduction can move uh, Moon Knight onto low ground and then Drac could follow up with a an attack from high ground uh, potentially too if uh, if uh, a mist form is able to get him there immediately. 
And we also see here Captain Crockpot pointing out he's repping the Dracula shirt, getting fully into character. Uh, went and changed into that after assignments uh, to make sure that he had the full power of the vampire on his side. Interesting. So we see uh, Kanshu clearing out sisters here. Um, and uh, two sisters go down pretty quickly. The first one was a, and I always win, um, from high ground, and then this one was a feint, which is a very interesting attack to see here, because against Dracula, typically you're obviously wanting to try to line those up into beast forms, because otherwise beast form can do a lot of damage. That being said, Dracula doesn't really want to attack Moon Knight when he's in his Mr. Knight form, because he gets that innate plus one defense, meaning he could be doing a value block of up to five, um, potentially higher, if, uh... If you um, have the past and present with a scheme in the discard, uh, which is most common after you use the healing scheme as your on your previous turn, so can value block the beast form pretty well. And the other thing to keep in consideration, which is probably why it was used to attack there, is it's um, a small value attack, but as Conchu, it's a four, so it's going to get over everything but a feint from the sister um, if she decides to block. And um, in addition. Uh, if you go and attack Dracula at some point, he can use uh, uh, Do My Bidding to rip that feint out of your hand anyway, so... Uh, Moon Knight wanting to get the sisters dead and maybe not waste a stronger attack um, that he could use later on Dracula, because Dracula's issue is that he has some really strong defenses, um, but he doesn't have a ton of them, so... Uh, eventually he's going to run into the situation where uh, those Kanchu attacks are going to start hurting if Moon Knight can keep getting in and attacking. We're seeing things like Ravening there, um, having to time that correctly uh, to work that around Kanchu. So no damage. Yeah, another feint already abused. That's true. Uh, Three feints already gone from Moon Knight. Yeah. Maybe anticipating an early beast form there, especially since the first feint was used uh, already. But uh, just going to be a dash. And yeah, two feints gone for Moon Knight is going to spell a bit of trouble later in the game when those beast forms start uh, coming out. Even besides beast forms, you still have other things like ambush, which would be end up not dropping into a beast form. That's going to be something useful to the Defend against me. We have even one now. This old one there to track you. Yeah. Not having a fake hurts. How long it go here before Dracula is able to bring any of the sisters back because that would be done. Yeah. That may be another thing that would be um, good there because um, Drac is going to have to. Uh, I mean, not Dracula, rather, Moon Knight is going to have to go through a lot of uh, sisters potentially and cards there to get to Dracula. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The uh, usually you see. Uh, people try to take out the sisters early because, you know, like you're saying, the the fact that they can body block just like most sidekicks can uh, mean that in addition to the value they get from their schemes and potentially being able to attack um, with things like ambush um, or potentially exploits and stuff, you're looking at uh, um, wanting to try to take them out as quickly as possible, but you don't really want to waste your Kanchu turns on them, so hitting them when you can outside of those Kanchi yeah, turns is pretty useful. What do you, what do you have against my sisters? Yeah, I don't want them. <laughs> Alright, she'll take it. So we see the Moon Knight uh, free move at the start of the turn come into play here. Letting um, so you, you actually letting Moon Knight reach the sister with a single maneuver. Oh. Oh, that's even better. Then I, well, then I, okay. You're welcome, don't worry. And we see a totally same thing to do, which would guarantee a kill on the sister, okay. um, if um, even if she blocked with a, well, I'm not gonna with a dash or an exploit. 
And uh, Patrick seeming to be a little disappointed there because uh, no block, meaning the auto damage isn't relevant, but uh, didn't realize it was optional. And we see Captain Crockpot there pointing out to Patrick that it is indeed optional. So good sportsmanship there. Um, uh, because there was no reason to take the damage, of course, since the sister was already dead. Yeah, it's interesting. I think so far we've seen all of the sisters go down undefended. Here. Yeah, however, uh, Moon Knight is on low ground now. Oh, and here it is! Oh, the go. first beast form, so kind of using that sister as bait to uh, bring Moon Knight into low ground and then hit with a beast form when only one feint's available and unlikely to be in hand. So by default, this is going to do uh, three, plus one more for each card that Crockpot discards here. And with uh, six other cards in hand, we could see a pretty big attack here. For anyone else who gets confused on if they are beast form, um, while that is a card effect that's bringing the combat damage up, it is still combat damage and yep. not, uh, not effect damage. So uh, that still hits conch. Yep. First action, my second action level maneuver. Yep. Interesting that we only see one discard here. Drac could have a lot of high value cards in his hand, plus he also might not want to be uh he might not want to go too far down in card advantage, especially going into a Conchu turn. Um and even with one discard, still gets five damage through with that beast form. Yeah, it's fine. Go for still it. Still a pretty good trade off. Yeah, if you got it, you got it. Go for it. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Was considering boosting there, uh, but uh, decides not to. The danger here is if Travelers is available, then Moon Knight can go onto that high ground spot and double attack his Khonshu. That is what we see here. Crockpot might have a dash available that he's fine taking some damage. Interesting. I'm not sure exactly what uh, and then will there while we would have played Travelers in that situation. Yeah, I mean, you get two attacks, but you're not getting the high ground bonus. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm conscious attacking. Um, maybe not realizing um, uh, that, or that you could move through the fighters, or maybe there's another plan here. Because I guess if... Uh, Actually, I, I see. I see the reason. Um, if, if I mean, if Kanchu doesn't want to attack again, which he might not with this hand, um, he could have gone. Uh, he could maneuver and go to this high ground spot in the middle of the map. Um, whereas if he ends on this high ground spot up here, uh, Drac is adjacent, can do a ping and do a damage draw card, and he might not want to let Crockpot do that. Yeah. Alright, so I'll yeah, take you see that last faint get pulled out there. Yeah. Usually with do my build bidding, um faint won't do any damage um to Dracula when you pull that out there, but it does uh, because of Khan she managed to Yep, so a little bit of a little bit of consolation prize there for Patrick being able to get that one damage over, but that is all three faints gone, which is gonna spell trouble whenever that second beast form makes its appearance. We did see a madness, uh, so if if uh, if he wants to hit with past and present here, he could madness. He'll gain the action because he did not start in this space, and then he'd hit with past and present as a seven. Um, however, Crockpot knows about it, so if he has a feint, he could throw it and only take two. But it is just going to be a fist. Uh, since the feint is a one value boost, past and present not going to happen, also probably wants it on defense. So that's going to be a five value fist into a look into my eyes, which is a three, since it boosts by the boost value of the uh, opponent's card. So two damage to Drac, and because Moon Knight won, uh, he will be able to move Drac up to four spaces. So tempting. <laughs> you want to come and slap me. Captain so Crockpot tempting. knows what the two cards are. Um, they are past and present and um, madness. So if there is a mist form here, it would be pretty good time to use it, though. Your follow-up attacks wouldn't necessarily be the strongest. Um, like a beast form wouldn't be able to be boosted too much. And... Uh, 
past and present is still blocking for five right now, so an ambush is unlikely to get damage over, though it could rip out that healing, which uh, wouldn't be terrible. And I guess if it does rip out the healing, it would deal one damage if he misforms onto the high ground. Just good maneuvering, get back up some cards, though. Yeah. Where you run? Yeah, so the, those ambushes are going to get their discard effects. Leave me alone. Um, and Beast Form will be able to be boosted, so. That's something that uh, Patrick has to worry about here. And Drac can play the uh, patient waiting game for now a bit. Definitely, we'll see him, especially on that next turn when Kong she was coming up and he's played for our procedure. Six cards, six cards, six cards, six cards, six cards, So we do see the first yes. missed form. So an ambush could be pretty nasty here. Probably not the beast form because especially now that you know the faint can't happen, you probably just want to line up the biggest beast form you can by yeah, having the top cards. You want to have a bunch of cards in the end here. Yeah. You're going to have to be dealing with ambush and some attacks on you here afterwards. You're not going to have these You taking it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like your audio might still be a little quiet. I'm trying to check with chat, but I'm trying to turn you up on my end, but it's it's still having some issues. Okay. Alright, let's just see what I can do here with this. I may be able to position the microphone a little bit. Yeah, that sounds a bit better now. And we see the feeding frenzy used there, um, and uh, Patrick decides to take it. It would have been a very risky take because a beast form... Uh, would have been able to get him down to one, I believe, if, yeah. But, uh, but that would require discard on all the cards, and Dracula's not going to discard everything, because that would leave him defenseless. Um, so, thinks it might be a bait attack. An ambush could have been pretty nasty there, because that could have done upwards of five damage. But uh, fortunately for Patrick, was just a feeding frenzy. Yeah, I think the ambush probably would have been the most, uh, the most dangerous likely thing there. Yeah. Because I don't think he would have been throwing beast form there, even if he has it in hand. As you said, he's just not got enough fuel to throw a beast form out yet. Yeah. Uh, yeah, twice, but I had the pre movements from the. Oh, okay. 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 So oh, it is an interesting take. Yeah, so Moon Knight wasn't able to quite get around an attack from high ground on Drac, even with the bunny hop. Would have needed to boost, and instead just going to take the high ground spot and set up a potential Conchu turn here. Drac just going to do a little run by and get out of there. <laughs> gonna take his own high ground position. So if uh, Conchu wants to aggress, he either, um, well, he only gets one attack unless he has the other travelers, and um, if he wants to attack, he has to be on low ground going into Dracula's turn, unless he has the other Fist of Conchu, I suppose. Though if Dracula has a feint, could stop that movement from happening and guarantee a low ground attack onto Mr. Knight. Does have the travelers. So this could potentially be uh, a lot of damage out. Put. Yeah, but that is the last traveler, so Crockpot not going to have to worry about that from here on out as far as position is concerned. And the two, um, having the two actions here gets a chance for the knight to either get away or. Alright, we see a seven value. Seven value past and present intermingle. It's going to do 4 damage over the dash. 
So Dracula definitely taking some hurt here, but is going to be able to move away from from the second attack. Does have to give up that high ground position, but won't have to worry about Midnight being able to attack again. So even if he ends on low ground, it's not the worst because there's no way that uh, Moon Knight can move and still have an attack um, after this. Dracula doesn't seem to want to move too far away from Moon Knight here. He's kind yeah. of staying fairly close. And if Moon Knight wants to take the high ground spot away from Dracula here, um, he will have to take a ping. So probably just going to see him take that center space. It's a pretty pretty pivotal spot on this map. Good spot to sit. Um, since your opponent, if they're melee, cannot attack you without being on low ground. Same as the spot Dracula was in this, uh, this past turn here. It's also a pretty good spot up here. So both fighters still have uh, all of their healing effects left. Dracula has um, two baptisms in blood and two prey upons. Um, and Moon Knight has both Madness Will Keep You Alive, uh, one of which we know is still in hand because we saw it earlier and it has not been played yet. Dracula has a lot more passes, so usually better in Fatigue though. Because uh, Kanchu does not take fatigue damage, Moon Knight can also play a pretty good fatigue game, especially if you can line up those cycles to uh, to come around the time that you start taking fatigue damage. Um, another interesting thing to note is Dracula's ability. Uh, the Ravening Seduction from the Sisters and the Prey Upon cannot damage Moon Knight um, when he is in Kanchu form. And so... Um, if Dracula's ping does not damage the opponent, he doesn't get the draw. And if Prey Upon, uh, Prey Upon only heals for the amount of damage dealt, so if it doesn't deal any damage, you don't get any healing. So, fun little interaction there between these two fighters. Both fighters at 7 now. If we see a scheme here from Dracula, he could just stay here. Could revive a sister, that would be the best one. Um, and we know that Moon Knight has a madness, so he can uh, at the very least play that in first action, which uh, means that it is a pass, and then he could maneuver after and uh, stay where he is and kind of have this little staring contest here <laughs> across the uh, the map at the, at the present. Um, looks like Crockpot not, might not have one of those schemes. Might might have a Ravening, but you can't use that when a sister's not on the board. Yep, looks like a Ravening was in hand. And uh, you could prey upon in place um, for no healing value, but with the amount of health Drac is at, might not be too comfortable giving up on that healing just yet. And we see two Ravenings discarded. It's a bit unfortunate, because you'd rather see something like um, Thirst for Sustenance or Feeding Frenzy. Um, to ditch there because if the sisters get revived those ravenians can still be used as passes even if they're not used for for damage um and fatigue can definitely matter here we see dracula at 11 cards to moon knight's 13 cards so moon knight currently ahead on deck and we do see the pass here and because of the what dracula had to do for that last turn um it's a pretty good time for patrick to just sit here and do the pass and then a maneuver. You might want to. You you could reposition just so you have a better time getting to Drac next turn, uh, since you're going into one of your Conchu turns. But uh, you don't overdraw here. And Drac, depending on the situation he's in, might be f uh, looking at a bad hand as far as um, passes and stuff is concerned. So yeah. if you can force him to overdraw again, that'd be pretty big for Moon Knight here. Yeah, you're making him either overdraw or have to go in there. Um... Approach. So yeah, Drac had a really good early game. Um, 
being able to get the <laughs> beast form in for some good damage as well as get rid of all of Moon Knight's feints, but looks like having a little bit of trouble drawing the schemes that he needs here to get it a bit healthier of a life total. And he can't really go in here because then you're just giving a you're giving Kanchu a free double attack turn. So hopefully he either finds a scheme or has some trash to throw away, because if he has to get rid of two like decent cards, mm -hmm. that's not great for him. And without any of that healing coming through, like sitting at six life is not a comfortable spot. You yeah. can as long as you have like a dash or an exploit, like you can survive a Kanchu attack maybe two, but it's gonna be not much more than that. It's a bad spot to be at, and Drac doesn't like throwing away cards, even if they're not the schemes or useful stuff, because that's just a potential beast form fuel that yeah. is uh, going into your discard. Exactly. We're seeing him going to have to overdraw here and get rid of something. Yeah, he does have a thirst. And one more card. Feed and Frenzy. Alright, so at least he had the, the stuff that didn't matter there. Okay. Feed and Frenzy, a nice bait attack, but at this point the feints are gone, so it's just a two. Um, maybe it can be a three if you get a sister revived and position right, but that's not, <laughs> it's not very good. Uh, Feed and Frenzy can be decent if you can get all three sisters, or even two, in the opponent's zone. Um, but at this point, it'd just be boost fodder or beast uh, form fodder. So, not the worst cards to discard to overdraw. But still, like you're saying, not what you necessarily want to see, because even those trash cards can be used to buff up beast form. And just in general, um, when you start getting into a cycle of having to um, run away and just overdrawing and tossing cards constantly, that just starts to lower your chances of being able to get through this thing and you're just bringing exhaustion on. Yeah. Dracula typically very good into exhaustion, but you know, he's lost a lot of weights to look around that here. Yeah. All right, and we see a boost in with Fist of Conchu and going to see an attack from Conchu onto Drac. And an attack right here is not surprising at all. Um, one of Moon Knight's drawbacks is a little bit of predictability when the big hits will be coming. Oh, that's scary. <laughs> Alright, so we see a faint going into that's the part I like. Three damage to Drac, which puts him at a dangerous health total, but does stop the effect. Which uh, is pretty good for Drac here to stop this, because Moon Knight would have gotten to look at the top three, discard whatever one he wants, and then put the other two back on top of the deck in any order. Um, so that could potentially, if Beast Form is not in hand, if Beast Form was in the top three, then that could get rid of the second Beast Form, which would put Drac in an awful spot. But it could also get rid of some of those healing schemes, or just useful defenses, etc. So, definitely uh, out of the cards to faint, that's one of the better ones, even though you're taking some hurts still. Generally, feigning Khonshu at all tends to hurt because it's got such big numbers. Yeah, even fainting the totally sane thing to do, which is the best thing to feint against Khonshu, you're still taking two from the combat damage itself. But you're stopping the after combat effect, which is nice. Dracula managing to leave himself with some high ground. together. Okay, yeah. gonna be an ambush. He did ping before uh, to get an extra card. Okay. So, so currently a three value into the four six. value defense. Yeah. Six we, uh, we'll go one, two, three, four, and then five. Yes. See what this hits. Three. Okay, that's a pretty good hit. So that's five, five damage, so one damage to you. So Beast Form gonna be a yep. five with high ground and the two value boost from past and present. Uh, so we'll one damage over the four value all in this best. together yeah, since this Mr. Nyan. Okay, okay. That's kind of what um, okay. what Dracula wanted to see there was um, a good solid card that could be used for defense uh, being called out. Yeah. And that one can actually be pretty strong on uh, offense as well. Oh, it absolutely can be. Let's see, so let's let's say he has a beast form here. The biggest block that Mr. Knight can make is a five. 
Um, so that would be two. He'd be one card short, so if if he has a beast form and Mr. Knight blocks with either another past and present or a good enough for us, it would not be lethal, but if it's any other block, he could discard his whole hand and get exact lethal here. So let's see if he has it. Yeah, Patrick, you're thinking about this one for a bit. Yeah. If it's beast form, I think that's exact lethal. I think so. I got one, two, so that's three, three five. Yeah, plus five like, yeah, cards. That's exact lethal. Over your four, that's eight. That's lethal. Uh. Oh, no. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Right. That's, that's seven. Yeah, they're just double yeah, checking the math. Good. But that is exact lethal yeah, with six, beast form. Six, that's 12. And then you're blocking for four. Yeah. Yeah, and that's like it'd be so scary with Dracula that he can uh, pull yeah. that out. Um, uh, the reason why I attack is we should get the fates and the things that can actually stop that out of the way. And it could have been the beast, like you said, and you didn't throw a four. So since you didn't throw a four, I was betting that you didn't have a four. I should have done the four. I do have four. it. Yeah. There's a I bunch of schemes he was looking for. So that's why. Yep. Right. Oh, so man. I thought you wouldn't have it. Oh, uh, man. <laughs> Good game. Can you see my cards? Yeah, I can see your cards. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, it was, it was so here. tough because I was like, man, I was healing. Yeah, you had your healing. Yeah. Wow. Uh. You were very close, very close to getting me. Oh, yeah, if I just played the four. <laughs> yeah, well, well played. That was, uh... Dude, my heart's going so fast. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That sucks. But, yeah, good game. That, yeah, I, did, good game. I did not think yeah. the second beast form would be there. That's uh... Let's not delete it. Let's leave it open because I think they're going to... I think he's going to ask questions. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I just hopped over here into Vorpal again, and uh, yeah, I gotta say, that was a very exciting game. Very uh, tense uh, from yeah. both sides for <laughs> for uh, for quite some time. Like, you know, seeing most of the feints go early is obviously scary for Moon Knight, but then those Khonshu turns just get in four and three damage over Drac defenses. Like, you're I still, know. like, the, the trades are going decent for you because, you know, you stopped, like, that's the part I like, and uh, had good, uh, like, a dash to get you out of a double attack, but still, you know... <laughs> Because of just the big values, you're taking a lot still, and not seeing the terrifying. healing schemes. And, and like the turns I wanted to do, he he was doing a good job only attacking as as Khonshu, and mm -hmm. so I never really had. I would have to move in to do any of my healing, like my praise. I've had the praise the entire game. Um, <laughs> I my my opening hand was it was this. This was my opening hand here. Oh wow. So I had four schemes and a dash at this at the start, and uh, yeah, that was that was terrifying. That was a that was a scary one. Okay, so I started the game with all three of my feints in hand, and I was oh. like, okay, well, how am I going to kill your sisters now? Mm. Yeah, we yeah, yeah we did see those feints come out pretty early. Uh, yeah. yeah. By the way, I don't know if you like hearing this or not, but there there was a when you were here and i was here i think mm -hmm. it was like that you could have traveled to here and got oh that. yeah i forgot that you can move through them but it wasn't <laughs> as, that wasn't the difference maker or anything but no true of course yeah i just want to let you know that that was yeah, option. yeah that was a good game that was a uh, very scary yeah very, very scary. i very enjoyed it all right and uh i i believe that i was pretty decent on the clock that game so it wasn't too bad it wasn't too bad to manage for me it was actually really nice because uh moon knight is already flipping his cards to switch yeah, forms true. so it was really easy there and then uh you know you you were uh making sure that either you flipped the card or it <laughs> showed on camera that i needed to swap so it worked well uh, on my side it wasn't too bad but uh but yeah awesome i will get that uh st this stuff cleared away and then we will get the fighters loaded in for the second one. Um, if you had anything else that you wanted to ask the players or comment on, Jeremy, feel free while I do that. Okay. Well, what were y'all both thinking going into 
that game there um, as far as how that goes because that was an interesting one that I don't play Dracula much myself um, I have played around with Moon Knight a good bit and I wasn't sure what even what we would think the matchup would even be who would have advantage on that one because um, it's just one that I right. I hadn't been familiar with um, but I guess it's good to see there that we could see the two typical things that usually happens Khonshu going in there and pounding down someone and just taking big hits yeah. um, over the whole game whenever he's Khonshu but then Dracula managing to throw out the beast form and just um, blow them out of there um we had people in the chat that were already doing the math on if you had lethal there or not for the yeah yeah for that it, it was tricky with with his going into mr knight um that made lethal a little more tricky um yeah but yeah it, and, and so i had lethal at one point and then he healed up for two and so then <laughs> so then i had to like rethink what i was gonna do which because of that it meant me taking another two attacks of conscious um, or no I, no, I took one because I was able to dash away. Um, and so him, when he boosted with your fist of Conchu, that really made me feel safe. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, because if you, if you first attack with your fist of Conchu, then that will counter my dash away and you'll bring me back in to get the second hit. So I was like, when I saw the fist, when I saw the fist go, when I saw the feints gone, it was like, okay, I think I can just dash away and hopefully live long enough just trying to figure out when to heal was the hardest part i never i just couldn't get any of my healing i had just drawn my um baptism uh from from my uh, ability i had just drawn that, that baptism and oh, so it was wow. like oh this is the turn i wanted to go lethal on um and yeah when i attacked him with the f when when i attacked him with the first card and he played a three that made me feel like he didn't have a four in his hand um and so because of that, I, I threw the beast form, my second attack. Um, and he was, he was like you said, he, he expected that beast form, the first attack. And so he didn't throw the four, the second one. I don't know if I answered anything you asked. Oh. <laughs> I don't still, know that I, I don't know that I, I don't know that I asked anything coherent. So that was okay. okay. <laughs> okay. I'll ramble. I will ramble if you want no. to ramble. I will, I will, I will ramble as well. So, you okay. know, we are. We, we are both going to ramble on here and not say a whole lot. Sorry if I scared you. Thanks for watching the video. This video takes a lot of time to make, and I just wanted to let you know there are a couple ways you could help me out so I can continue making content like this. Of course, you can comment, like, and subscribe. That's hugely appreciated. But also you can support me at patreon.com slash Captain Crockpot. And also, if you look down below, there's links to almost everything in this video, from the games, to my video setup, to uh, my unmatched storage solution. It's all available because I totally believe I totally back it 100%. And I want you to be able to have it. Most of the links are Amazon. I'm an Amazon affiliate, so I will make a small percentage. I wouldn't give you guys any recommendations that I would not buy myself. And most of everything that is in there, I have bought myself. Continue watching, thank you for your support, and I'll see you guys real soon. Bye. We see we're getting Everything into position here. Um, everything for Little Red and Yanenga here on Herat. Yep. Um, which will be an entertaining match for us. Yeah, this is one of my favorite matchups. Uh, so I'm excited to see how this one goes. All right, we got a wardrobe change. Oh, I love it. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, he came prepared, prepared with all of the wardrobe changes. I love it. All right, here we go. Let's go, Little Red. Bring it home, little lady. All right. We will catch you guys after the game. Good luck. Have fun. Yeah, good you. luck. You just have shirts of all the fighters. <laughs> yeah. So I, I just bought All right. <clears throat> we see uh, as uh, Captain Crockpot is shown, he is, he is prepared. He is ready with all of the, the outfit changes to match the fighters he is playing today. Um, I really want to see, you know, uh, if it does go to a game three, I want to see him like put on a full Bigfoot suit um, and then play with that. But maybe that's uh, a little bit wishful thinking. Um, but yeah, that first game was really, really back and forth, really close. Um, Patrick uh, had the ability to block with the four, and that would have let him survive that attack and maybe be able to get there um, when he got back to Kanchi again. But. Um, was just uh, guessing that 
the beast form wasn't there, hoping that the beast form wasn't there. Um, unfortunately uh, for him it was, so Captain Cockpot takes that first game, but it's far from over. Um, still have potentially two games to go, starting with the Little Red versus Yanenga matchup, and as I said to the players before we swapped back over, um, this is probably one of my favorite matchups in the game. I mean, Little Red is my favorite fighter. Um, uh, well, I should say my favorite fighter who is competitive, but uh, she's she's really fun to play, and I've had pretty good success with her over uh, the time that I've been playing competitively. Um, and I've had some of my best and most fun games uh, with her. Um, I actually played this matchup against Zero Skater in the uh, semifinals of the first winner of champions last year, and then I also played this matchup against Big Goods in the semifinals of uh, Summer of Legends um, as well. And uh, yeah, I've played it. I usually play it from the red side. I actually lost it from the yen side during my pools um, against Ninja. But uh, yeah, it's it's really fun. It's a really back and forth matchup. Um, the ban for this was uh, Sarpedon. Uh, because that stops Red from doing the thing. However, Red can still kind of do the thing on this map, um, though the opposing fighter has a little bit more counterplay to it and it requires more um, resources from Red to pull off, so you have to have a more specific hand. Um, but yeah, what uh, what are your thoughts on this matchup? I know it's one that you've seen and casted for a few times. Dang it. Ah, that makes life so much harder. I am... Uh, silly. I did not unmute in Discord, so you did not hear any of that. Um, stream heard me kind of give a little rundown of the matchup and talking about how it's one of my favorites, but um, I'll pass it off to you since you've seen this and commentated this matchup a few times in high-level play. And uh, what what are we looking for for uh, for each player in this one? Well, the big thing is there. Obviously, um, Red can really line up symbols really well on here knowing that those effects are going to get through onto the main guy because you mean it does not have the face has no way to cancel those on there so as long as red can make them match uh, she'll get the effects off uh, what you mean is going to have to do to counter that she's going to have to keep archers around and then so be able to pass off a bunch of health to them that's just going to be critical to not get isolated from them or to have the um, archers get completely nuked, um, which um, there's some possibilities of that on this map. As a lot of people know, this is not a particularly good map for Yanenga. Um, just um, the doors being able to be a menace to her as a ranged fighter, um, not having the tri zone spaces for jaws. You know, that's another thing that the thing has well, you're going against her. Let's see what the issue is. <laughs> the issue is, is huge because I do... Now the tactic that you see a lot of people do um, is just because of how important it is not to get my basket. She may need to go after him pretty early and get him out of the way before that healing is able to go off. Yeah. Because if he's able to get multiple healings off on it, that's just <laughs> more damage that you're having to free there. Yep. And Yanenga is pretty good at putting out, um, you know, she can put out some stuff, but she doesn't have like massive attacks in her arsenal. But it's more about her just essentially using her archers to tank. I think he, uh, I think he wants you to change your color. <laughs> oh my, this guy. All right. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I, I did speak briefly uh, during the time I was muted for you um, that uh, the, the thing, the thing um, can, can be done on this map uh, like Sarpedon, which is the ban, but it does require a either a Into the Woods... Um, uh, that has uh, the knife symbol, so one specific card, or you boost with the knives and then use the uh, Never Leave the Path. Um, since all of the archers have to start in this dark gray zone, if Red can reach that, she can use Path to deal damage to Yen and both archers, and Yen can't soak any of that damage since it's all dealt simultaneously. Um, but it is harder to set up than just needing uh, the one scheme card like on Sarp. 
So we yeah, don't see it here, more. but we do see Huntsman going in, probably going to try to whittle down these archers. Usually you want to do that pretty quick just so Yen can't shuffle damage off into them and then heal them back with one with the land. So... Oh, wait, I'm, uh... Oh, but your range too, it doesn't matter. I'll attack, um... I'll attack the archer. So if this is a long have I sought you, not only does it put uh, the best symbol defensively on Red's basket, the knives, but uh, the archer literally can't survive it. Um, so you yeah, could hey. see a pin the prey just to pull a resource out of Red's hand. It would still end up with long have I sought you on the top, but yeah, we just see the archer not defending. Um, that's going to be six damage to the archer, so definitely goes down. And uh, not a terrible start um, when you can start with it now, those archers. Um, the sidekick's very important in this matchup. The archer is key for Yen, uh, for her survivability, as well as um, positioning and, uh, and utility. Um, and then, of course, Huntsman, maybe one of the most impactful sidekicks in the game um, for any fighter. And usually you see people exclusively focus the Huntsman uh, before doing anything to Red because Huntsman has two it's schemes that can heal Red for a lot of health. Uh, they do four apiece if you have the right symbol in the basket, meaning you can do up to eight, and that is also a Wolfsbane symbol on the uh, the healing itself, and so you can recur it with um, what large hands you have as Red. And so, theoretically, you can get up to 16 healing uh, with the Huntsman, um, which is more health than what Red starts with. So if you do damage to Red, um, she's just going to be able to heal it back if Huntsman's still around. And so most people make sure Huntsman is dead before dealing anything to Red, because otherwise she's just going to get too much value over the course of the game. So while you often don't get value out of those healing schemes, the value you get from Huntsman in most matchups is the damage he can output while he's alive and how many resources your opponent has to dump into him in order to kill him. And, you know, if he can take a couple double attacks from Yen and a shift or a jaws or something, um, often that can be enough to feel like you got your worth out of him. Yeah, and you just need to get a few good attacks um, out of their hand, thrown into Huntsman. It usually doesn't take a whole lot for Huntsman because um, as important as Huntsman is, he is probably one of the most squishy uh, sidekicks uh, defensively. Particularly when knives are not in the basket, it really doesn't have a whole lot. Like yeah, this yeah. a good point that you bring up. The it, only blocks in the deck for Huntsman are two value. Um, so even though he has nine health, you can shoot through that pretty quick. Um, however, he does have the one block um, uh, stones in the belly, which if you have knives in the basket, uh, is it basically functions an, as an ambush. It discards a random card from your opponent's hand and boosts the value of your card by the their boost value. And so, in that case, he can block for um, a decent amount, and Yen has pretty high boost value. She's got a lot of threes in the deck, so he can value block with that card. However, once knives are not in the basket as your top card in the discard, then you won't um, be able to block for more than two with Huntsman, so your opponent knows the ranges of what they need to throw at you to kill Huntsman if he's at a low health total and knives is not present, or if all these stones are gone. We see a shift used to boost here, and it looks like uh, Yen was not able to reach Huntsman based on the positioning, so is going to go for Red instead. Another interesting interaction with Yen and Red is um, the double attack. Uh, Red c knows what the value is for the second one, so she can line up whatever effect she wants uh, on that, like, based on what she blocks with the first one, especially if she uses, like, a basket, which gives her a wild, um, for the first half, then she can, um, block the second half with, uh, any of her good defensive options, because even though her values are low, um, a lot of Yen's values are low, too, so, you know, she's maybe taking one and then dealing three back with, um, with Mouth, or three back with Once Upon a Time, as we see here. And Yen will take two from this. I, so Red takes one from the Stallion, um, from the combat. And then Red reflects three back to, to Yen. She puts one on the Archer since it was still in her zone. And then Stallion Charge goes through both Red and Huntsman for one damage each. I 
So potential already to see healing um, in this match at some point since uh, red has taken a little bit now. And this would be a great time for a hands. Uh, Two value attack that after combat you can return it to your hand, or if you have Wolfsbane in the basket, you can return the top card to your discard pile instead. And Once Upon a Time is one of the best cards to recur with hands. Especially against Yenenga, who doesn't have any cancels, so you're guaranteed to get that three damage at some point. So I I I would be surprised if this wasn't a hands at this point. I mean, if you don't have the hands, then you know it could be a basket or something else like that. But okay, just gonna be a four. Uh, so would have loved to see the hands there, but you still have another once upon a time, so you can try to cycle it at some point. And gets one damage over the stallion with the um, ears, which. Uh, can either be used as a 4-value attack, or if you have knives in the basket, a 4-value defense, so a pretty flexible card. One of the cards that's normally really good at uh, baiting out feints from the opponent, because um, you get 2 over a feint and they're not cancelling an effect anyway. Um, but Yen doesn't have the cancels, so doesn't need to use it in that uh, way in this matchup. So Huntsman blocking with a wolf skin. He's going to draw 2 cards and then uh, can block the second half, if he so desires. Really, because of that downside of throwing these double attacks into Red herself, um, throwing them at Huntsman might be a better case a lot of times. Going to block the second half of this attack with stuns in the belly, which is active now, thanks to the wolf skin. So Yen going to lose another card here. Huntsman, un oh, well, Huntsman guaranteed not to take any damage, because all the cards are at least a one value boost, so... Crockbot hoping to hit a valuable card here. Just as I'm talking about a uh, reason to not want to throw that in the end, you end up uh, seeing Huntsman be able to line up with some symbols. And the point blank being a pretty good one to throw. Not a good one to have pulled out, though. Yeah, it. there's definitely a lot... Uh, bigger impact cards that we could have seen there. So Yen probably not too uh, upset, but losing that auto damage is uh, it, it's still not great. Because that's also like a pretty good way to get some guaranteed damage into Huntsman as well. If he's low enough. And we see a Red already missing 3 health, so if uh, Crockpot can find one of those healing schemes... Into the woods? I'm going to see an Into the Woods first action is going to be the Knives one. Door is closed, so Red will have to maneuver here to open yes, it. Uh, I'm going to Path, so we'll deal 2 to Yen and 2 to the Archer, who only has 1 health remaining. So that will take care of them. That is just a really good um, effect against Yenenga there with it taking out the archers at the same time. She isn't able to pass that damage really off. Really so 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 like so so. Yeah. Another interesting interaction. So while Yen doesn't have any feints, <clears throat> Yen does have shield formation, which is a defense that's pretty attractive now that uh, all the archers are gone. It... Um, it forces your opponent to either let you revive an archer um, or discard a card if they want to stop that effect from happening. Um, and against red, that can be... Usually, you know, most fighters, while they don't like to lose a card, usually will have a lower uh, importance card that they can ditch to stop that archer revive because it essentially ends up being two more damage plus the utility from the archer um, that Yen loses out on if you stop the revive. Um... But with Red, since she relies on the symbols in her discard pile, um, messing up her symbol can be really awkward. But Red also doesn't have uh, zero counterplay to that because what she can do is she can attack with a card um, that if she's attacking with the symbol already in her discard pile, she can just make sure she has a backup card with that same symbol to discard in case shield formation happens. But 
If you're feeling a little bit risky, you can also attack with something that does not match the symbol in your basket and hope that your opponent blocks with the shield formation and that you can ditch the uh, ditch the card um, that has the symbol that you want and get the effect where you otherwise want it if anything else was used to block with. And uh, I'm definitely not just trying to reference the, the play that I made I was in both about of the, to say, I... the big red games that I've played in semifinal matches in the past. I was about to say, I think I remember um, <laughs> commentating on a game where somebody did that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've been able to pull that off twice, and it was it was quite fun each time. It is it is pretty amazing when you pull. But it really off. highlights it really highlights all of the little interactions in this matchup and why it's one of my favorites. Um, because Red Red's a character who has struggled with recent releases. There's a lot of fighters now that do well into her, so you have to kind of get those out of the way in Arsenal if you want to to utilize her. Um, but when she can. Uh, get her effects off. She's a very strong fighter into a lot of matchups, and even ones that she can struggle with, she can still win um, if you know how to play her and bait stuff out and use your effects properly to their fullest effect. And so, um, it's just it's it's a really fun puzzle I find for both players uh, when she's involved, and it's probably one of the reasons that I've played her as much as I have. Um, and this this matchup really highlights those those strengths of her design. We see a boost with point blank. Last turn we did see the Grim Tail come out only healed for three since Red was at 11, but that's more healing than you normally get with Huntsman in most games, so uh, definitely not going to complain if you're Crockpot here. Um, Sometimes you just gotta gotta play the card while you're in a yeah, I think I, I think I would it. take the three healing almost every time if I could get it. Like oh, absolutely. usually you get zero, so three is more than fine for me. Because we're seeing exactly what Ian's doing right here. Up here. Yep, unable yeah, to reach spiders. Huntsman yeah. again. Going to ha see the first Big Eyes, which is a ignore and cancel if you have Wolfsbane, which uh, Red did. So going to stop that Stallion charge. For, uh, Yen's not going to be able to get away, and Huntsman won't be taking any damage either. Uh, another interesting note, Huntsman doesn't have any cancels. This is the cancel that Red has, and it's Little Red specific. So, um, Huntsman not able to cancel effects, meaning that Yen can actually attack Huntsman with stuff like Surprise Volley to get guaranteed revives on archers. Though Red is unable to stop all of the Surprise Volleys anyway, because she only has two copies of her cancel. Okay, and we see a Shield Formation here. This is actually a really cool interaction, because if Crockpot discards a Wolfsbane, he can just get back the card that he discards and let the large hands go to discard. Yeah. That also is quite nice because now this I'm sets up sure. the knives in the basket and he can just return this large hands to his hand as well. And Wolf Skin, a pretty nice card, especially since Yen doesn't have any card draw. Have to, uh, um, <laughs> this can help oh. you keep up with card advantage or overwhelm her um, with card advantage, <laughs> depending on how aggressive she gets and how aggressive Red gets. Um, but also, not the worst thing to lose <laughs> no, there. No um, and it also gets the knives in the basket. Red attacking again. Could just be that hands once more. Hands a really good card to just whittle down defenses or uh, pressure archers against Yen because since she can't cancel, that hands can just keep being returned over and over again. Um, and since you have two copies, one of them can eventually be used to get back a Wolfsbane card, and then you can still keep doing the cycle. But a pretty good block here for Yenenga into the hands. Um, full blocks it. Your lowest value block is Yen, um, outside of your Archer card. Um, it also gets some, some uh, auto damage back into red there. Really, yeah. while it's important know the decks of the opposing fighters you have to keep track of what's in the discard pile i think that red is one when you're playing against her that it's just even more important yeah um, you know like what cards line up well with what symbols yep um, it's just you absolutely have to do that to have any type of success against red because you know just, just those effects are just so nasty when she's able to get symbols to line up. And we see another reason that this map is quite bad for Yen. This is one of her worst maps, in my opinion. 
uh, because the zones, there's a lot of hard zone cutoffs um, that uh, like Red is sitting in now where if Yen wants to come in and attack Red, she's forced to be adjacent. Um, in addition, uh, the doors, when they're closed, block off the zones um, of the the connections that get cut off by the door. So like the Yen, the spot Yen is sitting in right now, if that door were closed, that spot would not share zones with any other space on the map. Um, meaning that depending on how she positions and how archers are positioned, uh, your opponent can isolate you from your archers just by closing the doors potentially if you're not careful. Um, and also utilize those hard cutoffs to negate most of your range advantage. Okay. And this is such a difficult one here for Yen um, and to Red and Arsenal because uh, when Red has advantage, because if you ban Sarpedon to try to avoid thing happening right at the start of the game, well then you're almost certainly going to be playing on Herot, which is terrible for Yen. And if you go the other way and ban Herot, well now you're risking having your archers nuked uh, first action of the game. Yeah. So, you know, it's really rough. Yeah, and there is actually some fun counterplay to the thing that Yen can do um, on Sarp, which um, is uh, what Zero did against me in our semifinals. And he, you can put the archers up, basically starting next to red, since the yellow zone uh, extends all the way out that far. Um, and it means that if red wants to do the thing, in order to actually get back around to the zone that your archers and Yen are in, with how the layout is, um, she still has to do the boost or have either boost with knives or have the knives into the woods uh, plus the scheme um, so it makes it less likely and I didn't open with uh, both of those things in that game and when the archers don't die to the thing on turn one Sarpedon actually becomes the map that's not terrible for Yen it's definitely better than Heroad is um, and uh, there are some hard cutoffs still uh, so red it, it's not like a terrible one for red but I think it ends up definitely being way better for Yen in that matchup it's just the risk of you know losing both your archers and taking two turn one is often uh, enough to to just be disincentivized from allowing it through I mean you gotta think with Yen that's essentially like six damage yeah uh, exactly <laughs> it's it's Sorry. ridiculous she can still recover from it a bit better than a character like Robin Hood would be able to, but it's still really, really rough. So yeah, we see uh, an attack into Huntsman here with the with the surprise uh, um, volley there. Yep, surprise volley. So like I said earlier, Huntsman cannot cancel that, so guarantee to get the archer back or the action gain if he wants, but definitely wants the archer in this situation. And then Stones is going to take a card from Yen's hand. Going to be, again, a situation where no damage is getting through. A shift not the worst card for uh, for Yen to lose here. Yeah. It's a pretty solid damage into Huntsman. Uh, it's guaranteed three damage if there's not knives in the basket. And it can get some damage over red, but she does have plenty of four value defenses. And we haven't seen any baskets yet, so she's still got a lot of control over the symbols as well. Not red. Necessarily... Yeah, good. So it's not that you necessarily want to keep Huntsman around if you're Yen, but it is it is nice to be able to throw cards into Huntsman primarily to get the, the effects, uh, effects yeah. off, since you know they're not going to get cancelled. And yeah, the hands is what I was expecting here into the archer who does block with divide, which does let it survive even though it's only a two value. Uh, hands is only a two value. So we might see... We might see uh, the stones get picked up here, but actually what I kind of like doing is taking back the hands, attacking the archer again, and then taking back the stones. We'll see exactly what... Oh, that should be paused. That's my bad. We'll see exactly what Crockpot wants to do here, though. He might want to try to set up a different symbol in the basket and uh, maybe maneuver up. He might not have... Uh, it could be a situation where that stones was like the last decent defense he had, especially if uh, we're talking about Huntsman, since there are a lot less cards Huntsman can block with. So... Uh, uh, I can't have enough time yet. I was going to say, like, I, I can't manage all this. Alright, um, and then I will attack with little red to the archer. And we're going to see another attack. 
Might just be the other hands. Might have both of them available, which is why I was willing to, to get back stones with that other one. See another divide. This time it is a basket, so that will kill the archer since divide is only a two right now. And puts a wild in the basket, which is exactly what Red yeah, loves to see. Right. Gotcha. Um, everyone here in the chat I think that there. Oh, that was to say there was another big game going on at the same time here. Um, the, a lot of our audience is kind of bouncing between. Oh yeah, yeah, I know that. I, I forgot to mention it. Sorry, there's been a lot I've been managing, but uh, but yeah, Freak I believe is live right now with the match between Hammersmith and Chupa. So uh, definitely, definitely give that a watch either now or later, uh, depending on um, what you're feeling. Because yeah, uh, that was one that I was uh, wanting to host, but um, oh sorry. It was one that I was wanting to host, but uh, obviously this one was going on at the same time, so glad that Freak was available and able to, to do that. Uh, a bit of a shame that I couldn't commentate with him on it because uh, we haven't done that for a while, but I'm going to try to be getting him in on one of these uh, that I do for the bracket. But fortunately, uh, since we, we talked, uh, you were able to, to fill in for commentary, so that's always always a good time. So we see a double maneuver from Yen, just building that hand back up, went down to one card. And uh, Red... Probably just going to double maneuver as well. Position a bit better. Maneuver. Wait, how did you... Uh, it's the huntsman here, right? Yeah, it went one and then opened it. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. One, two, one, two. I'm going to boost. And we're going to see a boost. Interesting. Oh, just going for the pin on Yen. Okay. Um, yeah, I just saw that. I saw it, and I'm uh, like, that, I'm gonna I was gonna say you're wasting the wild, but uh, going for the Let's pin, for right. I can I can actually uh, get behind that. Yeah. All right, and long have I saw you keep some knives on top. An interesting one to boost with here, because this is actually really good as an attack yeah. into Yen, um, since she can't cancel. It's always gonna be a six, and without archers to soak, she's gonna be taking some pain. Um, Jaws is her best block. Since uh, in this position, for example, Huntsman would only be doing one over a Jaws, um, but would be doing uh, two over anything else. But yeah, going for the pin here, um, I think, is uh, a pretty good idea from uh, Crockpot because uh, all the stallions are gone. So Skirmish can potentially help Yen get out of this, but it doesn't help immediately because uh, a Skirmish and a Huntsman we know that there's a we know that there's a stones so yeah skirmish into huntsman so depending on what this hits does yen have anything that's a one boost yes but they're both gone so yen is guaranteed to lose this combat so she's not going to get to move huntsman away if it's skirmish so she is going to be stuck in this pin and is losing a card here loses a one with the land it's not a uh a combat card so it's not like a defense but it is uh it is some free healing that she would have been able to utilize potentially that's um hang on if she would be able to get archers back yeah, yeah it, that would be really nice if she, if she can get the archers back she's got to be able to start dumping something Yen in a really, really rough spot here. Yeah. Yeah, this one's not. Okay, alright, I was gonna say you might want to use a Master of the Hunt just to get more cards at this point. You don't love to see it used this way, but, uh. But otherwise, if you don't get more cards here, you're just dead. So, has to try to draw into some defense and didn't want to risk only seeing one card. Red at pretty low hand count, so she's not going to be able to lay on too much uh, here, but, you know, in this spot, with no archers and pinned, Yen is going to have some trouble regardless. Especially if Red can find the other hands and just keep throwing that over and over and over again. That would be the, the most brutal thing here. Yeah, this is not that anybody likes to be getting pinned, but no. and getting pinned without her archers. Not a good spot for her. Let's 
see. Also, I'm just uh, another thing I'd like to point out is the fact that there's 13 cards left in deck for red, 11 for yen, and Huntsman is still alive. <laughs> that is not normal for most games. Yen has just not quite had the the ability to take him out, and to be fair, Crockpot has done a great job positioning, forcing Yen into really awkward spots if she does want to try to get aggressive on the Huntsman. It's a big hit there that ended up taking the four damage there, and also keeping a wild on top of the basket. All attack. Your attack and just on past the attack. I'll attack, yeah, yeah. I'll attack <laughs> the, uh, with Little Red. Okay. Um, yep. Crockpot deciding who to attack with, which is why I hadn't paused the timer yet. Um, again, hands would be pretty nasty here. Would either keep cycling it or get the basket back, though I think you just keep cycling the hands at this point. Because I don't think Yen can, like... Red has a lot of health, so Yen can, can't can really mount too much counter pressure on her. Ooh, but that's a good one. I think... This is interesting. I, I think that... I think you probably just... I mean, Red kind of has to let the... The Archer come back. I don't know if you can just go down to no cards for Red. I mean, it's not like Yen can attack you back because you're both going down to no cards, but... I mean, this, this also has to be a Knives if you want to rip the card. It is a Knives. Okay, it does get a double attack out of the way, um, so that's not terrible. And two damage over over the shield formation. You do lose out on the auto damage from Mouth, but honestly, Yen probably not attacking you too much at this point, because she's just trying to survive, so Mouth might not get a chance to be used for a bit anyway. And yeah, I think this is this is, might be a first for me. Both players at zero cards. Uh, one of them pinned, and uh, this is <laughs> this is a very interesting spot. Now it's just a top deck war, which is not something you see too often in Unmatched, I must say. So, you know, especially not at the at the level that we're seeing it at yeah. here. You don't see it come down to that. I'm I'm for it. It's it's it's. Oh yeah. It's super. It's super neat. I mean, Yen is going to get the the. Uh, initiative here with um, drawing first, so Red might have to release this pin depending on what this first maneuver looks like. But even if she releases the pin at this point, the damage has been done. Yen's at four, and uh, Red's in a really good spot. Um, she still has a once upon a time, and she even has the ability to get that back with um, hands and potentially have six auto damage there. She has a never leave the path. She still has a long have I sought you from Huntsman. I honestly think you just release the pin here and maybe back up. But gonna stick with it. I mean, again, Yen can't really aggress you without uh, just risking dying. <laughs> so keep keeping the pin up for at least another turn. Yeah, and as it's pointed out in the chat, that there is still more healing there available for Red. You know that we haven't seen all that and she's able to get that that she can essentially just start taking some attacks um, yeah. Nanga not going to have anything really big um, as far as huge numbers there um, red sitting on the single zone space um, and not being able to activate a momentous Yeah, momentous being turned off here, uh, basically indefinitely until this pin is released, is is big for not yeah not being out, but a ton of damage. Going to be hitting red with a double attack. Basket full blocking the first half might just be taking the second half. Is indeed going to take the second half. Uh, second action. Are you, did you maneuver to get up? We maneuver to get that. Oh yes, of course, yes. Sorry. Yeah, hey, 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 nice try. Uh, uh, uh. Right. And at this point, oh boy, just keeping keeping the pedal to the yep. metal. All right, <laughs> just going for it. That is the last double attack gone for Yen. Yeah. Yeah. All right, and that's it. Looks like no defense for Yen. Yep. 
tried to tried to put that make that double attack to force red to back off but red takes it and goes for the counter lethal hoping that no blocks were drawn and they were not I'll uh, turn up the players here and hear some post game chat favorite is because if I do pull that, you know, net path, it's, it's, I just have to maneuver and do it. Yeah. This one I have to maneuver and boost in certain situations. This one is so bad. It's, <laughs> I yeah, felt like this the whole match, I felt like I could do nothing against it. Every time I had to boost in, could ne end up next to you and then attack. Yeah. Yeah. These spaces right here, these four are just so, money. So rough. And the archers got taken out so quickly. It didn't have my archer, my archer cards. That was a wild game. <laughs> that was like, crazy. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, well, I got to say, uh, this is one of my favorite uh, matchups, and you guys <laughs> made it extremely entertaining. <laughs> I think I think also showcasing why Hero Rod is such a bad map for Yen. Um, yeah, it's horrible. <laughs> but it's like, you know, do you, do you ban this instead of Servadon? Because it's like, if the thing happens turn one, it puts you so far behind. Yen can still win, but it right. makes it so, so difficult. So it's yeah. like, it's kind of a lose-lose situation for her with, for sure. with Red on advantage. So, yeah. Yeah, once once those Stallions were out, it was... <laughs> yeah. I looked at her yep. and I was like... Ooh. <laughs> yep. Yep. As soon as as soon as you went for that pin, I looked at the discard. I'm like, oh yeah, that's all the stallions gone. This is bad news for Yen. Yeah. Um, Jeremy, what what did uh, what you have any thoughts on that match? What uh, what you like to comment on or ask the players? Um, I was trying to think of a good question here on that one. Um, I think a lot of it we were able to go over pretty well there in the commentary. Um. But um, I think a few things there, just being able to keep Huntsman alive uh, for a while so that that pin can be used there. We were talking about that you need to keep Huntsman alive and to be able to get the healing, which is important. Yeah. But being able to pull the pin off with him ended up being uh, probably the most critical thing that he was around for in this game. Yeah, I mean, yeah. luckily I had, I got four stones um, off uh, it was a good time when, when when this this was really fun to do infinite and i was i was gonna i feel like at some point if i get too greedy i'll lose like you actually you were very close i mean in your last attack you had this and this yeah uh so i mean that's nine damage i only had one defense so you could have there was a chance you in the old world you get six damage off and i'm down you know even further but um and that that risk is always there with yen you know if you get a master of the hunt with some some extra action gains and stuff it's it's oh she's always scary no matter what so i was i was trying to figure out if i should do this I've, I've lost a lot of games trying to do this infinite forever um so i decided to, to give him the defense uh and, and go with the stones and that worked out a lot that worked out really well yeah i think i think the time that you uh you gave up the hands especially since you had another one that you could eventually find if you if you wanted to start doing the infinite again yeah i think the timing on that hands was uh was really solid giving you that option for stones which ended up ripping out a pretty good card and full blocking so right yeah yeah, yeah i got four discards through that which uh, which was really nice yeah. the, also i mean just the way that my deck went it was lucky for me um having all the symbols able to match up that worked out really nicely sorry patrick you're saying something yeah it was so annoying on the skirmish as well <laughs> i was like okay well, yeah. there's one way to get out of this mess now yeah and then you just yeah just discard it and Oh, I had my, uh, I had one of the, one of the land, and I had my master of the hand, so I was going to connect anyway. So that was that's right. really, really sad. yeah. When the skirmish came out, I was looking. I'm like, unfortunately, both of the divide and conquers, which are Yen's only one value boost, were in the discard. So that yeah, stones was boost, guaranteed to win. Uh, our boosters are so solid. They're so they're so strong that it can hurt with cards like that. Yep. Yep. Yeah, really fun game though. Really, really fun. I hope the people. <laughs> enjoyed it oh yeah I, i'm sure that they did i definitely did so that was uh that was definitely a uh a fun one to watch but yeah so that that's gonna wrap up this set congrats to captain crockpot for advancing yeah and thank you despite uh this being the end of your tournament run patrick uh you've played extremely well i've uh you know followed a little bit of your uh your pools as far as your record and seeing some of your match results and uh, you still played both of these games extremely well too so um 
this being your first tournament, like I know you said uh, before we we went live that you've been playing a while, but this is your yep. first like tournament, and I'd say you did pretty well, that, <laughs> yeah, all yeah. things considered. So yeah. definitely, uh, definitely hope to see you back because uh, yeah, it's clear that you are a really solid player and put on a heck of a show here for all of us. So thanks for that. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. There were great games, yeah. yeah. <laughs> At least it wasn't like one sided. You always felt like, well, this is a way to get out of here. Yeah. And that's all. Yeah, that's the that's the best way to uh, to play. I think. Here's a question, because I've never seen uh, an in-game reset where both players have zero cards. Have you guys seen that? Has anybody seen that before? We we made we made a comment on that. I don't think I've ever personally I, seen that myself. I've, I, I've never seen that. <laughs> I've never seen it in like a serious game like this. I mean, it's like when it's me and friends goofing off at home with it, not in a, a tournament game like this. Yeah. Um, where it just turns into literally just trying to top deck each other. Yeah. Um, just... yeah. <laughs> well, it, it was interesting because we, I mean, we both had two cards, mm -hmm. right? And then uh, I attacked and he defended. I attacked with the stones, he defended with his shield. And so it was like, wait a second. Okay, let's both, let's just do this thing. And I happened to have, um, you know, my knives, uh, this one. So I, hap I was like, okay, you know, I can discard it, not get the guy back and let's just... Let's just do this reset thing and yeah. see what happens. Yeah, and um, especially with the pin situation you were in, it was disincentivizing Yen from like exactly using anything she drew to attack. So I think even though you gave her the initiative like to start drawing first, it still yeah. ended up being a better spot for you just because of the health lead and the pin. Right. So yep. I, I think it was I think it was a solid call. But yeah, that's I I mean I've seen fighters have like one or two cards like each like in really back and forth when both fighters are trying to be aggressive and play that game but yeah this, i think this is definitely a first scene zero for both fighters at the end of the <laughs> turn <laughs> at least yeah. at least the turn that isn't like the end of the game right like it was still going both, yeah, still both have, like, players had no right? cards yeah it was, <laughs> it was crazy yeah that was fun <laughs> oh i'm, I'm gonna i was ready i was scared of the game i don't know how Lost it, but sure. I was ready. I was ready. Oh my goodness! <laughs> oh, it's a shame oh, we man. couldn't have uh, seen the the last costume change. I was ready for the costume change, but that's you know, so good. I'm, I'm, honestly, I'm glad I don't have to use it because I do not want to play Bigfoot into Muldoon. That's so. fair. I think, it, I think it would have been yeah. fun. <laughs> where would you have? Uh, where would you have gone? Because I would have banned Yukon. What map would you have? Um, would you, we pick the map for that one? Yeah, we picked the Baskerville. Oh, that's right. I picked it. Okay, Baskerville. I actually have to say. I never played InGen before, so I was. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow! That's, oh, that, that that's is quite that's, a gamble there. <laughs> yeah, that's and that's also a. Uh, so it's it's. I think if it it can depend a little bit on deck order, but I think with optimal play generally, it seems to be InGen favored, but it's still a very close matchup. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, not, not yeah. having played it before would have been really Yeah, I think not having the experience with it would have made it a little bit rougher for the in-gen side, for sure. If you hadn't told me, and we were playing, and you were doing some stuff, I'd be like, what is he doing right now? <laughs> Just my own little world. Like, like what? This is, so, <laughs> be like, this is so confusing. Like, mind games you without even realizing it. He's setting up some secret tech I've never seen before, <laughs> yeah. He would have been the most aggressive in-gen player ever. <laughs> yeah, so, um... So I think Zero is asking in the chat about uh, about I assume this is in reference to the to the costume changes that you had available. But uh, if you knew whether like these were going to be among the fighters that you picked beforehand, so you had <laughs> shirts available, or is it just you know you have a wide range of stuff and it worked out? I bought like twelve shirts. Okay. Uh, okay yeah, and... they're they're wondering what other ones you've got. Oh, guys, listen, you'll have to stay tuned. I'm not okay, gonna... all right, all right. Not giving no away spoilers. the secret just yet. Just yet. <laughs> all right, I like it. You guys will have to watch uh, the next uh, next game in the top 16 to maybe see some more of them. Yeah, and when I saw my fighters, I was like, okay. <laughs> I own these shirts. I can pull them out. Incredible. <laughs> awesome. Well, now everyone's got something to look forward to, so oh, yeah, for sure, definitely for sure. stay tuned for that. <laughs> awesome. Well, um... Unless uh, anyone had any closing thoughts, I think we'll get wrapped up here. Yeah, just great game, man. Thanks, thanks for playing. A lot of fun. Some of the most fun games I've played. 
Uh, great to yeah, thank you for playing. Thank you other guys for commentating it. It's, yeah, thank you guys for I'm gonna rewatch it and see every mistake I make. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, watching stuff back helps a lot, you know. I've I've That's done the true. same thing with my own games and I definitely will have to do that with some of my ones this tournament because I definitely made more mistakes than I'm used to doing. Uh, so trying to learn from those and, and not make them next time is uh, is yeah. the most important thing. Yeah. Um, also, Patrick, this is my third tourney, and I got smashed my first two. Um, and then it's just something sort of clicked. And like, instead of my first two tournaments, I literally was picking champions. Like, I was like, all right, I would look at their history and like, oh, who are they going to play? And then I would try to pick based on that. And now it's just like, okay, I think I sort of know who I'm going to go with. And, mm -hmm. and um, so my entire strategy has changed, and, and I've played a lot more games. And so, uh, you know, just playing more and, and, losing all my other tourneys just really helps just get ready for it so yeah actually you know, you're, you're i didn't look shape. up your your matches yeah, <laughs> yeah you're in I was like shape. okay well you have ingen oh I'll just take that is that what you did <laughs> no well i did look at i said i saw like ingen dracula so i was like okay i want to get yen in there right and i want to get uh well i you always picked... like sun wukong i mean you really did pick my like your roster was some of my favorite fighters so um yeah, I was I was so scared. And, and if you had gone Daredevil, he's my least favorite. He is oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I have put more rants in the Discord about Daredevil <laughs> than anybody else. I hate him as well. I usually just well, I, so far I think I picked him twice, and then I just pick him so the other person doesn't pick him. Right. But yeah. I don't even like if I would play him, I would probably just just <laughs> just not play it properly, and then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. This is. Uh, that that's that is the the game right like okay i don't want to play against this person let me pick them and then you get stuck with them and you're like well i don't want to go with them um, yeah that's true and I'll, i will say you did help me out uh in the drafting when you told me that <laughs> <laughs> you were being honest you're like i'm not gonna play daredevil i was like okay good to note Let's <laughs> well, at least we got our fun games then we did yeah we had some fun games for sure <laughs> we don't need that scumbag around here Oh, no, it's it's a me comment, but you know, I'm sure that Zero will uh, yeah. at least at least uh, throw up some of those emotes I, to to back up my. Play. I got I got desperate enough for a win in this tournament that I finally had to resort to Daredevil. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it happens. It happens. Honestly, yeah. like I I really disliked playing against him when he came out, but I, I've I've come around to it. I've had some fun games against Daredevil. Um, that InGen versus Daredevil one I went against Chad on was is still one of my favorite games. Oh, wow. um, probably not quite my favorite game of that match because the last game five just came down to such a wire and that was such a close one. But but I I've, I think it's mostly because um, while he did seem ridiculous when first release, there's a lot you can do to to counterplay right, and and he has like pretty clear weaknesses. Yeah. So and that's that that's often the case when uh, the new fighters come out that yeah. they'll come out and it'll seem like oh man how are we gonna stop this guy this is just insane right. and it's like well when when no one has figured them out yet uh they seem unstoppable but there's usually something there yeah yep. unless you're electra but you know we don't talk about yeah her. well yeah but no yeah it, uh, it's a great set and i'm glad that i was able to host it for you guys so uh, best of luck as you move forward, uh, Crockpot. And yeah. uh, Patrick, like I said, hope to see you back again. Yeah, probably. Yeah, thank you. Uh -huh. Awesome. Well, I will let you guys get going, and then I'll be signing off on stream here real quick, and I'll catch you guys next time. All yeah, right, perfect. see you. Thank you. Bye, Bye guys. guys. Hey, well, there you have it. Uh, some awesome games against Patrick. I was fortunate enough to get the wins. Um, if you made it through the whole thing, and you're still here right now, Comment below with Captain, my Captain. Uh, I want to see who has made it to the end here. Really fun matches, both of them. Um, I've never seen that before, going down to no cards. That was just absolutely crazy. And uh, uh, let me know, have you seen that before? Like, put it in the comments if you have. Again, huge thanks to Darkblade for hosting the matches. Also, huge thanks to uh, Poindexter for co-hosting with Darkblade. Just the two of them uh, added a lot to the game and the insight and uh, just made it really fun to watch. And then if you want to see the next match, it's against Bjorn. It's a top 16 match, and it was, it was crazy. I'm Captain Crockpot, and I'll see you next time.